right? <laughs> Jeffrey, buenos dias, senor. How are you? Ah, fantastic. It's another beautiful day here in the Napa Valley. Yeah, kind just, of. You're spoiled. You're just <laughs> freaking spoiled up there. Without a doubt. Yeah, well, you <laughs> Without know, a doubt. It's a choice, right? It's a choice. Yeah. It's a lifestyle, right? <laughs> good, 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 good. Well, listen, my turn. Uh, and for, for those of you who are just... Uh, this is your first episode with us. We still haven't come up with a name for the show. We will, and maybe we should have a little contest, Jeff. Uh, yeah, maybe that's a good idea. Help us, help us name this thing that we're doing. Um, but this is your first time with us. Uh, my name is Brent Abel over at webtennis.com. My very good friend, Jeff Jacklich up in the Napa Valley, who is a, a tennis coach extraordinaire, especially to... <laughs> the older set who are out there trying to win uh, some national titles. Um, but anyway, so we've decided to get together and just kind of unscripted, kind of ask each other some questions about teaching tennis, about how, about our own personal experiences, our own stories. Right. <clears throat> and uh, did I just totally butcher that whole thing of what we're doing or? Oh, no, that's what we're doing. It's unscripted, right? It's, it's, so we're it's just, mostly a butcher job. Okay, we're I'll hopefully, uh, you know, we're going to share some personal stories that, uh, you know, that enlighten our crowd here that, that you know, um, no one's immune to stress and pressure and choking or great victories. I mean, you know, we all get to live through all of it um, in this pursuit called tennis. That's right. That's right. And by the way, these guys don't know it yet, but I am wearing the Body Helix hat. Body Helix, the the maker of the great compression sleeves, which my left <laughs> knee loves and my right <laughs> wrist occasionally gets. But uh, they don't know it yet. But they are going to be one of our sponsors, Jeff. So oh, how uh, nice! Just there a little, go. just a little, <laughs> a little pre, shameless plug. A little. Pre <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah shameless i suppose um anyway my turn today to ask you a question and uh totally unscripted uh, last night we were we were we were chatting um i think about a couple of the, the gals that you were working with yesterday yeah and uh one of the terms that you came up with two words which uh were uh, a feel fix yeah and I all of a sudden that thing just hit me between the eyes as I got to write this down, which I, which I did last night. <laughs> and I love, first of all, I, I love the alliteration of it. And I was thinking maybe we could add a third word to it. You know, some words starting with F, right. you know, the, anyway, <laughs> um, dangerous. Yeah. The fricking feel fix. Um, but share with me or us how that, relates to you not only as a coach in helping someone um and maybe that's really kind of the the answer i'm looking for is you and i teach way more from trying to develop feels of right. what a swing is like or what something's like rather than going through the checklist of the manufacturing on the assembly line do this first do the second then you have the 17 degrees angle and then there's the <laughs> lag and then there's the windshield wiper, but that's got to happen at, you know, minus two nanoseconds. Right. So getting away from all that garbage <clears throat> and trying to develop feel, and most of the feel I think comes from imitating or watching uh, someone else do it and just trying to recreate what it feels like. And, and yet you had something last night you said, which was a, f a feel fix. So when someone is is maybe not feeling the right thing, I mean, is is that what you mean? They're really at least they're they're showing that they're not feeling right. the thing, whatever it is you want them to feel. How do you how do you help them fix that feel to to a different feel? Wow, <laughs> where to start, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bam. Yes. <laughs> okay, so um, you know the there is you know without without discounting the mechanics of of hitting a ball right in any athletic endeavor there is a mechanic right uh, a kinetic chain the body working in in unison with its joints muscles all of that coiling uncoiling 
there is an athletic process to that. There is a mechanical process to that. And, and getting, getting ourselves into a position, and obviously we're talking about tennis here, um, and we can talk about the forehand. There is a coil to it and an uncoil. And so mechanically, there, is a, there, is a, there are pieces that have to be put in place so that uh, that kinetic chain can be released. And your body wants to uncoil, wants to release in a logical progression. I mean, it wants it. We're designed a certain way, you know. Our our joints move, hinge, rotate in these uh, in very specific ways. Um, some joints more flexible than others and rotate differently. And with that, um, there's a process to get this lined up, and then you have to kind of get out of the way, and you have to feel what it's like to allow your body simply to uncoil to to get there, right? And that's that's where this this conflict comes in, I think, um, for a certain uh, a certain group of players that have worked really hard on the mechanic. And so every time they go to hit a ball, they are mechanically inclined to manually produce the stroke. Do this first. Do this next. And right. it's just a checklist that you go through. It's, it's a checklist, and it's very <clears throat> um, rigid. And it doesn't allow for adaptability. And I want to make two statements here that, that there's, a, there's a, a huge difference in my view between adaptability and compensation. I think those two terms are light years apart. And yet the word compensation is used a lot. I hear it on the court a lot. I hear it from other pros a lot. Oh, you overcompensated there. And, and I think it, it gives a false impression that everything was fine there, but something went amiss and you had to compensate. So let me explain compensation in my view. In my view, compensation happens when we lose posture, which then we lose balance. So now your body is in a position that is, is just unserviceable in terms of the kinetic chain wanting to produce this stroke for you. So posture and balance then force us to have to use the hand, get wristy. I'm, I'm throwing my elbow in there. All those things that we don't want to have happen are forced to happen because the clean kinetic chain can't happen because our posture and balance has been thrown off. It's challenged. Yeah, I call it uh, improvisation. Right. Okay, so, so I put compensation in that category. Compensation only happens when our balance and posture has been uh, challenged and thrown off, right, for whatever reason. Adaptability is where we want to live. If, I'm, if I still have posture and then IE balance, which, which is born out of that, I can adapt to the ball coming in. I can change the plane of my shoulders to, br to, to handle a ball coming in at a different angle, but I haven't I haven't lost the kinetic chain, so I still get to uncoil. My swing path stays clean, um, and my forehand, let's just say, stays intact. So that's a feel to understand the difference between those two things. And so for those players that, that struggle with this, that always every time they go to hit a forehand, it's this mechanical production, there is no adaptability. So when the ball isn't exactly in the right place based on the way they set up, Everything comes into play, then the hand, the elbow, the this, the tilt of the head, the rock. I mean, all these other things come into play. These compensations come in because there is no adaptability available. So how do you get someone, how do you get a player to start feeling going from one field to another field, the fix? How do you, how do you steer them in that direction from going from manufacturing something where the mindset is manufacturing to adaptability. And we all know that, I mean, it's not like golf. The ball's not sitting there. Right. <laughs> and we don't get to kind of come up and adjust our position a little, you know, inch here, a little inch there and kind of settle in. Uh, we are in constant adaptability mode because the ball's moving and we're having to move as well to adjust to that. And it's pretty darn rare, at least for me as a player, 
right. where I get to recreate the same swing over and over and over again. So for me, and, and as a teaching pro, one of the challenges I've had is, is I've tinkered with so much stroke technique that I thought, you know, I think a lot of players do the same thing, is to think, well, maybe I can engineer the game in a way right. <laughs> so that all I have to do is be on the assembly line for the next forehand and start with thing one, thing two, and just go through the assembly line and then it's a finished product and the ball leaves and it's, it's what I want. And yet we don't have, we don't have right. the assembly line there. It's just, it's, it's so many different variables that uh, I think if we get into manufacturing as opposed to what you're saying, which is feeling, and then there are going to be times when that didn't feel quite what I want. I'm not, I was about to say that didn't feel right or right. that felt wrong, the judgment thing. But right. how do you how do you shift? And maybe you've already answered this and I'm just kind of a blockhead on this. But but again, there's the feel fix. So you take them from a feel that maybe is it needs to be fixed. And then how do you point them in that direction? Like, OK. Here's, here's a different way to think of the field. Well, like um, yesterday, yesterday with, uh, with the girls on the court. Um, and these, by uh, the way, are top national level players. Right. We've got, you top. know, one, one um, multiple, you know, over 20 gold ball winner. Uh, the other one is now flirting with quarters, semis. Um, in, in her age bracket, great athlete. Um, and so, yeah, these are, these are players that know how to hit a tennis ball without a doubt. Um, the one who's now, you know, flirting with, with the, with success and kind of, you know, wanting to be part of the conversation there, there is a disconnect in watching her hit a ball and, and watching that happen. Um, this, this, and she's very athletic, so she gets into a good position, but then, swings the racket independently of her body hold on there we go um message <clears throat> uh, i can't talk right now i'll call you back later sorry <laughs> <laughs> we're closed <laughs> yeah, that's right after hours after hours um so there's this independent arm swing of the body and so going back a little bit to the kinetic chain so First, it's understanding, and again, this is this is after you know my years on the court. You know, tennis is not a hand and arm game. Tennis is a feet and body game. So, with that premise, I had to get her to attach her turn, her coil, with her with with the lower body with with coiling the body the shoulders coming around you know the hands being out i know this is kind of hard to describe technically here uh you know on a call like this but but then when it's time to hit um simply kind of the idea is just once you're coiled stand up and your body will want to uncoil right so coiling implies then uncoiling so turning and unturning um, and in that allow, allow your arms to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for to be directed by the lower body, allow the arms to follow the, the lower body uncoiling. So she was not feeling that. Correct. And so I have, a, I have a little technique I use. I you take a rope and you wrap it around the back of your body and hold onto it with your hands and then just turn to the side and all of a sudden you feel the connection between your hands out in front of you and, and your body. And all of a sudden you feel your core actually being in charge of this. <clears throat> and so that little exercise, we did it for about five minutes. I had her just coil, uncoil, coil, and, and start to really get that. And then I said, okay, let's hit a few balls now. And I go, just do that. I go, don't, don't worry about swinging the racket, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden she knew because of that feel she just experienced right. with the connection right. between her arms not being independent of her body but actually being connected to the body um, immediately she started rolling the ball cleaner because now she understood the plane of, of just changing the pitch of her shoulders and she could change the angle of attack on the ball and all of a sudden she's just 
she's just rocking the ball and, and her eyes are getting big and she's just like, oh my God, this is like, this is amazing. And I said, yeah, this is, so, so let's, let's just stick with it. Just keep feeling it. And, um, you know, and, and so then, you know, we played, um, played some 11 pointers and she was just, just doing that and staying focused on, on that production, not worrying about winning the point. And, um, it was remarkable watching yeah. transformation and watching her finally have like, oh, okay, I get it. This is how you reproduce a stroke. Um, as you just described, how do I reproduce it now in the middle of rallying? Um, but I think what you've done with her is you you showed her a way to feel. Right. Without putting it in tennis terms. And which I always think is a good thing. It's I think the word the term is, well, it sort of feels like. And right. whatever it feels like is not a tennis cliche. It's not an instructional cliche. It, it feels like this, but in your case, all you had to do was wrap her up in rope and she was, and right. she was, and she had the feeling, but that to me and, is and maybe, maybe on another call, I'll actually stand up and show what that good. is. Okay. You, know, you know, maybe we can do that on another one. But I, I think, I think the really good thing there is that is the aha moment. The epiphany for her was a feel as opposed to, Oh, I need to refine my checklist. I need to refine the assembly line. It came down to, this is what it feels like. This is what I want to feel like. And from there on out, I wouldn't, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll bet you now that she could go watch a top player or right. someone else who does this. And she goes, I know what that feels like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Cool. I mean, I mean, that, that was the exciting uh, thing yesterday is that um, then, you know, we tinkered a little bit with, with how much, how much lag, how much do you allow the arm to lag a little bit, creating a little more racket head speed? And there's a, like right now, this is, this is, she's in the infancy of understanding it. Yeah. And so there was a point where it got away from her. And then here comes the arm again, working independently, right? I said, okay, so I go, just back up a little bit, get reattached, and just, you, you're gonna, this is gonna take time for you to find out how much lag is going to be manageable in the stroke for you to be able to hit the ball clean, um, roll it when you want to drive it when you want to and hit it harder when you want to, but not lose control over the ball to the extent that it's, it's, um, you know, off the charts, you know, and, and, and in that process too, we also had a little, a little discussion about, um, you know, how clean every ball feels off the racket. And, and so that brought up this whole other part of this discussion, feel. Like, what does it feel like, right? So, and I said, you know, if, 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 if I'm in the backcourt, if we're just warming up or we've hit for 20 minutes and I'm feeling, now we're warm and we're going to start really hitting. And I had a big digital readout up on the fence behind me that did zero to 10. Hmm. And that readout could read in my mind how clean I felt every ball got struck. And, and the honest answer was, you know, most of the time, I'm going to tell you, I live probably between a 5.5 and a 7.5. And, and if I feel like I'm living in a match in the seven range consistently, I'm kicking somebody's ass. <laughs> I mean, literally, that, that's, you know, if you really think about the cleanliness of each shot, where it landed on the court, this whole thing, and it's this instantaneous thing that you're reading when you're playing. You know, you do it, I do it, players do it. But the honesty is, is like, you know, how clean are you actually hitting the ball? Okay, the ball, there's such variation, height, spin, pace, um, all those things, you know. So the honesty is, is that, you know, when you live in the mechanical world, you never hit a 10. And the fact that you're judging it, oh my God, that was a three, that was a four, that was a this, that 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 you're always you're always living in this. I'm never going to get there. When you can, when you live in the feel mode, you're you're like, okay, wait a second, I just I just hit three sevens in a row, and they all felt really good. You know what I mean? I mean, so yeah, well, and ahead. I think I mean, that well, I think that uh, you know, she had an aha, an epiphany moment on the court where she felt it. Um, my advice would, would also be, look, go home right now, 
when we're done. <laughs> and I want you to rehearse the feel. Don't rehearse right. the mechanics, just rehearse the feel. You can do it with a racket. You can do it without a racket. You can shut your eyes. I gave eyes. her the rope. I gave you her the rope. for the rope. You can tie yourself up. I said, take uh, this, go, go stand in front of a full-length mirror. I said, look yourself in the eye when you do this because that's the orientation of the ball coming right, at good, you. Good, good. And I said, I said, do 20 or 30 and just feel that. Yeah, yeah. And then no, call I, it good. I, I think there's no question that we don't do nearly enough off-court, at home, in the yeah. office, stand up for five minutes and rehearse the feel, uh, sit back down, close your eyes for 60 seconds, visualize Visualize yourself inside your body and feeling it without moving. Do the same thing where you're the observer. You're visualizing you as the observer looking at that feel. And I think if someone wants to get to that 7.5 consistently a lot <laughs> right. faster, you got to do some off-court rehearsing and some off-court visualization. So, JJ, that was really good, man. Um, I don't know if we need a third word with an F for the total alliteration of <laughs> feel fix. That right. may be a, a, that that may be enough. But uh, um, well done. Thank you so much for that. And at this point, we're gonna we're gonna sign off. What is it that we want everyone to do right now? We want them to feel that mouse and yes. to uh, click what? something. Yeah, we, we want them to feel that they like us. <laughs> and okay, now do this feel, first. You know. Feel that they'd like to subscribe. Oh, okay. All right. Um, and feel that share button too. Feel Let's just share it. Yes. Yeah. Feel the need to share it. <laughs> and if you're feeling you've got a question or a comment that we're just full of crap, that's fine too. You can feel that's that. Um, and let us know down below in the comment section what's on your mind, guys. So. Uh, JG, as always, uh, way too much fun. Uh, guys, get out there and make it a spectacular day. And uh, I think we're going to do this again tomorrow. Can't wait. <laughs> All right. All right. Signing off. Yeah. <laughs>